RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, star Ray Milland, production It Happens Every Spring, director Lloyd Bacon... The Hollywood Screen Directors present a tale for April evenings. The motion picture baseball story, It Happens Every Spring, starring Ray Milland in his original role of Vernon K. Simpson. In the spring of the hallowed year of 39, certain financial interests met in a smoke-filled New York hotel room. Present were the czars and barons of the Great American Popcorn Trust, the insidious hot dog monopoly, and the infamous soda pop cartel. Business was off. Sales were dropping. More popcorn, hot dogs, and soda pop had to be sold. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how baseball was invented. And ever since then, it's happened every spring. Baseball. Let Monk Lanigan tell you about baseball. It don't make no sense. For instance, take the year the St. Louis win the series. It's the first of the season, and I'm supposed to be a catcher. Only with the St. Louis, there ain't nothing to catch. Our pitchers is either getting hit halfway to Kansas City or else tossing them so wild, I need a ladder to snag them. So, one morning, I'm out in the park talking it over with Jimmy Dolan, the manager, when this guy shows up. Hey, Mr. Dolan. He's a real serious-looking yokel with horn-rimmed glasses, and he looks as much like a pitcher as Margaret (laughs) O'Brien. But he walks up to Dolan and says, Mr. Dolan? I am a pitcher. And Dolan smiles the sweet Dolan smile and says, Scram. Mr. Dolan, (laughs) you need a pitcher. I can win the pennant for you. Monk, kindly make this crackpot disappear. Okay, son, we're busy. But I am not a crackpot. Dolan, he says he ain't a crackpot. He ain't a pitcher either. Mr. Dolan, it's a simple mathematical fact. I can win at least 30 games for you. My boy... What's your name? Simpson. No, no, no. I uh, I mean your first name. Vernon. Vernon K. Simpson. Well, Vernon... Beat it! <laughs> oh, Dola, why don't you give him a chance? Maybe he's got something. I have indeed. Thirty games. If you can pitch one game, I'm the Queen of Sheba. Well... That was the year Dolan started being called Queenie. Because this guy, Vernon K. Simpson, yet, he don't look like a pitcher, he don't throw like a pitcher, but he's a pitcher. Baseball. It don't make sense. My name is Deborah Greenlee. Debbie. And I think I know how Mr. Mark Lanigan feels. I mean, it's all so crazy. You see, I was engaged to Vernon K. Simpson that year, the year that St. Louis won the series. Of course, we all knew that Vernon was a fanatic about baseball and especially about the St. Louis team, but we never dreamed that... Well, after all, he was a very steady young chemistry instructor at the university and Father would never have given him his permission if he'd known that... Well, you can see how crazy it all is. Father is president of the university and one morning about 7.30, Vernon rushed into the dining room while we were eating breakfast and said... Good morning, Debbie. Darling, Uh, Dr. Greenleaf, I know this is a very odd hour to call. Why, Vernon, what are you so excited about? Look at him, Father. Yes. It reminds me, is there any more mush? (laughs) Debbie, (laughs) darling, I I have to talk to your father. Dr. Greenleaf, I have to go away. Well, before you go, please pass the mush. (laughs) Debbie, I'm sorry about leaving you, but you'll see I'm going to make enough money for us to be married. Money? Aren't you satisfied to starve to death like any decent young university instructor? <laughs> Dr. Green, if it's in connection with my university work that I'm going, that is, if you'll give me leave of absence. Oh, 
Oh, Father, I'll bet Vernon has invented something. Yes. Yes, I have, Debbie. Well, what is it? It's just the greatest... Well, it's a secret. Vernon, I've watched you closely ever since you came to the university. Every spring, Vernon, you've acted a little uh, odd, if you don't mind my saying so. I don't mind, sir. And that's fine. Because this here, brother, you're crazy. <laughs> Dr. Greenleaf, I'm sure I can justify myself. If only you'll give me a chance, I implore you. Well, if it's for science... Oh, thank you, sir. You'll never regret it. And Debbie, darling... Oh. I love you. I love you, too, and I'm going to be so lonesome. Goodbye, dearest. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye. Hold somebody, please. Pass the mush. <laughs> and so Vernon walked out the door. And I'm not sure of anything that happened after that because... Because... Well, all I know is that was the year St. Louis won the series. <laughs> If everyone seems to be confused, it's only natural. Because I'm Vernon K. Simpson, and of course, I'm the only one who knows what really happened the year St. Louis won the series. We'll take up the story on the afternoon preceding my visit to the Greenleaf household. I was in my laboratory performing a very important experiment. As was my custom, I turned on the radio and was listening to the baseball it's report. It's too early in the season to pick a pennant winner, but it doesn't take an expert to pick the St. Louis squad as the loser. The major weakness is the pitching department. The manager, Jimmy Dolan, would give his eye teeth for one first-class hurling. I recall a distinct twinge of anxiety for the St. Louis baseball team, and I admit my thoughts were on the diamond as I bent over a white precipitate forming in a flask. Then... A baseball crashed through the window of my laboratory. I looked up just in time to see a group of children disappearing around a corner, and so I turned once again to my experiment. Shambles. A complete shambles. The ball had smashed through test tubes, beakers, flasks, and retorts, and the remains of my experiment lay in the sink. A complex mixture of Lord knows what. I pushed aside these shards of glass and picked up the baseball, which was immersed in the chemical-filled sink. Looking at it, I lost my temper and threw it at the wooden floor. And immediately found myself grasping the baseball again. A surprising fact, for although I'd thrown the ball with all my might, it had not touched the floor. I wish to add that I pride myself on my pitching ability, a faculty developed since childhood in all moments when I was not studying. So, winding up, I let fly once again at the floor. After performing several similar experiments, I came to the scientific conclusion that the unknown fluid in the sink had imbued the baseball with an amazing property. The baseball was repelled by wood. I wish I could adequately describe my feelings at that time. I poured the fluid from my sink into a bottle. A bottle that could create the greatest pitcher in baseball history. Of course, when the fluid ran out, well, I didn't dare think of that. I thought only this. If I should cut a small hole in my pitcher's mitt... If I should pour some of the fluid onto a sponge, and if I should hold that sponge so the fluid would seep through the hole and cover the surface of a baseball, no batter on earth could hit that ball because it would, of its own accord, dodge the bat. So, being possessed of an opportunity to play baseball, make a great deal of money and marry Deborah Greenleaf, I asked for and received my leave of absence and traveled 78 miles to St. Louis, where manager Jimmy Dolan agreed to give me a practice tryout. He was doubtful, and so, I am afraid, was the kindly gentleman who was catching for me, a Mr. Monk Lanigan. The batter stepped up to the plate, and Monk called to me. Okay, young fella, let's see what you got. Hey, who is this guy, Monk? Dolan told me to bat one over the fence. He wants to be a pitcher. Break his heart easy and get it over with. Watch me. <laughs> Come on, Vernon, steam one over. Very well. Here it comes. <laughs> What kind of ball was that? It must have been an optical delusion. It, it ducked right under the bat. Uh, hey, you Vernon, let's have that one again. Certainly, Mr. Lanigan. <laughs> that does it. I gotta get glasses. Yeah. You better get some for me while you're at it. I saw the same thing. Hey, uh, Vernon, come here. Mom. 
Monk was that guy kidding? Shimmy, sure as I'm standing here, I saw it. He throws the screwiest ball I ever seen. Do you smell alcohol on my breath? Nope. I ain't drunk. Nope. But you saw that ball do what it did? Yep. Then you're drunk. <laughs> no, he isn't, Mr. Dolan. I can throw a ball like that every time. Young fella, either everybody here but you is crazy, or you're crazier than all the rest of us put together. I don't know. But anyhow, you got a job. And so it was that I, Vernon K. Simpson, by virtue of chemistry, became King Simpson, pitching giant of the St. Louis. And so it was that I turned my back upon the halls of learning simply because I discovered the secret of making a baseball go... are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of It Happens Every Spring, starring Ray Milland and presented by RCA Victor. In just four more days, the first baseball of the Major League season gets tossed out and the fight to a series finishes on. What thrills for the fans at the game? And what thrills right in their own home for television owners who can't make the game? RCA Victor Eyewitness Television is the next best thing to being there in person. Yes, it's America's favorite. Because more people choose RCA Victor Eyewitness Television than any other kind. Choose it for clear, bright, steady pictures. It's America's first because RCA Victor has set quality standards for the entire industry. Quality standards in all details that add up to finer television performance. And only with RCA Victor can you get, at moderate additional cost, all the benefits of the RCA Victor factory service contract. Your RCA Victor Television set is installed and serviced by RCA experts and top performance guaranteed for a year. It's the only factory-to-you service in television. So ask your dealer about complete details when you see RCA Victor Eyewitness Television. Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of It Happens Every Spring. Starring Ray Milland in his original role of Vernon K. Simpson with Ted DeCorsia as Monk Lanigan. Those of you who care to do so may check my record with the St. Louis Baseball Club during the year of which I speak. I'm known in the guidebooks, of course, as King Simpson. Suffice it to say that the St. Louis won the pennant and went into the series. The mysterious liquid accidentally concocted in my laboratory had done its work well. But if the truth be known, I wasn't happy. My mind lingered long and lovingly over the blonde and beauteous Debbie Greenleaf. And it was while I pursued these thoughts in my hotel room one day that Monk Lanigan entered. Hiya, Vernon. How's he over? Hello, Monk. Hey, what's the matter with you? Me? Oh, nothing. Lonesome, I guess. Ha, I can fix that. Find an old pal, I'll move in with you. Now, Monk, you don't have to do that. Well, nice room we got here. Mm. What, uh, what's this bottle on the dresser? Monk, don't touch that. Huh? That's what I use on the bo- I mean, that's what I use on my head. It's hair tonic. Oh, hair tonic. Say, who's the doll in this picture? She's the young lady to whom I'm engaged. Well, it's funny you never brought her around. Oh, I couldn't do that. She doesn't know, and her father doesn't know. What don't they know? About King Simpson. They don't know he's me or I'm him, you see. No. Well, her father, Dr. Greenleaf, wouldn't have let me go if he knew what I was doing. Let you go? Where'd he have you? Well, Monk, I, I'm sorry I can't explain. But look, you're my friend. and I've got to see Debbie again. Now, she doesn't live far from St. Louis, and, well, I'm not pitching tomorrow. And, and Monk, I, I want you to cover up for me if I run up to see her. But tomorrow's the first game of the series. What's the difference? Jimmy Dolan says I'm supposed to rest my arm so I'll be able to pitch the final game. And besides, I'll pitch better if I talk to Debbie. I don't know. Please, Monk. Okay. i tell you what you do. You go up there, but leave me the phone number so I can get in the hole of you in case Dolan wants you, okay? Okay. Monk. 
My train arrived shortly after midnight, and since my time was limited, I resolved to go directly to the Greenleaf home. Stealing across the backyard, I stood directly beneath what I thought to be Debbie's window and threw a few pebbles to attract her attention. Debbie! Darling! Darling, come to the window! Darling, it's Vernon. I love you. Well, I don't love you! Dr. Greenlee! <laughs> What's the idea of banging on my window, you twerp? Well, I thought it was Debbie's window, you see? Well, why don't you use the door? Well, I don't want to wake anybody up. Young man, you're a lunatic. And where the deuce have you been all these months? Well, I, I can't tell you. I Never mind. I'll be right down. Vernon! Debbie! Oh, darling, where in the world have you been all these months? Why haven't I heard from you? Debbie, you've got to trust me. My experiment has been a success, and so have I. We'll be able to be married, darling. And when? After the end of the season. What season? The, uh, duck season. <laughs> well, Simpson, explain yourself. Vernon's a success, Father. We can afford to get married now. A success in what? Ducks. <laughs> Simpson, after the way you've deluded us, it's a good thing you don't expect your old job Oh, back. but Dr. Greenlee, if I do... I'll have to have it back when the bottle's empty. Bottle? I knew it. He's taken to drink. Dr. Greenleaf, if I've done nothing of the sort. Well, then it's worse. If a dimwit like you is making money, it can't be legal. Father! Well, look at the facts. He runs off mysteriously and comes crawling back mysteriously, talking about his money. The man's a criminal. You can see it in his face. Father! Answer the phone. Uh, criminal, that's what he is. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm sure it's nothing wrong. I'm afraid your father wouldn't approve, Debbie, but believe me, it's perfectly legal. Hey, Dillinger, it's for you. Oh? Oh, thank you. Must be one. Debbie, you should have heard the voice on that thug who's calling him. I'll bet they're planning another crime right now. Oh, that's the craziest thing I ever heard of. Well, I'm going to find out for myself. Shh. Father, that's eavesdropping. Sure, come on. <laughs> What about it, Monk? How'd things go today? Killed him, huh? That's fine. <laughs> now it's murder. That boy will stop at nothing. Well, it's too bad I had to nail him at second, but I, I guess he's getting too old to steal anyway. Deeper and deeper. All right, Monk. I'll catch the next train back. I know Dolan won't expect me to start mowing him down for a few days, but if he's worried... Yes, everything's fine here. No. No, nobody suspects me yet. Right. Goodbye, Monk. Oh, Vernon, how could you? Ah, uh -huh. we know you now for what you are. Murdering and stealing and mowing and Oh, down. But, but you're making an awful mistake. Young man, <laughs> for my daughter's sake, I won't ask the police to come to this house. Kindly leave immediately. Sink back into the swamp of your criminal life. Oh, oh my, oh my goodness. Oh. I still love you. Take me with you. I'll be your gun, Mom. Out! <laughs> Goodbye, Debbie, darling. Goodbye. Come on, Vane, and snap out of it. We'll do it at the ballpark. I can't, Monk. All the music has gone out of my life. Music? Look, you ain't no piccolo player. You're a pitcher. And you've been sucking in this hotel room all through the series. No job to go back to. Branded a common criminal. For the love of Pete, will you get a move on? Dolan's got to use you today. What with the series tied up three and all, we got to win this one, Vernon. Oh, very well. Monk. Yeah? Where's the bottle that was on my dresser? You mean your hand tonic? No, I mean the fluid that... Oh, yes. Yes, the hair tonic. I lent it to a bald-headed bellboy. <laughs> you... No. No, you couldn't. Well, what's the difference? You ain't playing for the house of David. Mark, you don't understand. That bottle, I... I won't be able to throw a single strike. Oh, this beats me. What do you need it for? Because it's... Well, it's a lucky charm. I'm superstitious. Well, I heard a rabbit's feet and elk's toast, but hair tonic, that's a new one. I'm ruined. Now, look, Vernon, I'll tell you what to do. Leave everything to Monk. You get down to the ballpark, and I'll scare up that bellboy. He'll give me the bottle back. I'll bring the bottle to you, and we'll win the series, okay? You've got to get it back, Monk. You've got to get that bottle. The 
series is tied up three and three, ladies and gentlemen, and here we go into the top half of the fourth inning. St. Louis leads four to three, but the way King Simpson is pitching today, it doesn't look as if that lead is going to last very long. Now, look here, Simpson. Yes, Mr. Dolan. I don't know what's got into you today, but if it weren't for some pretty wonderful feeling, we'd be behind in this ball game instead of a run ahead. Well, maybe you ought to take me out, Mr. Uh, Dolan. Uh, no, sir. I'm, I'm going to take a chance on you. It's your ball game, Simpson, to win or lose. A lot of guys are counting on you. That's all. Now, get out there and hold. Hey, hey, wait. Well, Mr. Lanigan, it's very nice of you to show up. Have you got it, Monk? Sure. Here it is, kid. Here's your bottle of head, Tonic. Oh, thanks, Monk. And don't worry, Mr. Dolan. We're going to win this ball game. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen anything like it. Here we are in the top half of the night, and King Simpson has held Chicago hitless since the first of the fourth. As if by a miracle, he suddenly got his old fire back. And right now, there are two out. The count is three and two. Here's the stretch and the pitch. He swings and misses the batter fans. That ends the ball game in the series. St. Louis wins. And, oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, King Simpson, the winning pitcher, has just keeled over in what seems to be a dead faint. What happened to me, Monk? That's okay, kid. You just fainted. Boy, you won a beautiful series. I did? I now, take it easy. The doc's looking after oh, you. Oh, my wrist. Yeah, you must have fallen on it. It's pretty swollen. The doc thinks it's broken. He took an x-ray. Oh? He'll be bringing a mine out. You know, when you fell, you broke your luck, too. How? You broke your bottle of hair tonic. Oh, a gentleman. Uh, you got the picture, doc? I'm afraid I have some very bad news for you, Mr. Sampson. You've suffered a linear fracture extending into the joint. I'm very much afraid you'll never be able to pitch professional ball again. Fine. It's all right, Monk. When that bottle broke, my pitching career was ended anyway. Ah, oh, that screwy superstition. That don't mean nothing. There wasn't no hair tonic in that bottle. Well, you see, Monk, what did you say? When I finally found the bellhop, he'd already used the stuff up, so I filled the bottle with water. <laughs> you mean... You mean no chemical? I'm really a pitcher, after all? Certainly. I really struck those batters out? I did? Oh, no. You're burning my boy. Dr. Greenleaf. Debbie? Oh, darling, you were magnificent. But what... I, I, I... Look, you were so upset about your girl and our old man, I figured I could help. So, last night I phoned the same number you gave me when you went visiting that time. And they know everything? Why didn't you tell us you were King Simpson? Always knew you were a fine young man, little eccentric. <laughs> then you don't mind? You mind? Why should I mind? Just because you're a little crazy? <laughs> hey, when are you coming back to the university? Well, as soon as... Right away, if you'll have me. You're good. You got a famous ball player on the staff now. A little screwy, maybe. Vernon. <laughs> Vernon, ain't you gonna kiss your girl? Vernon, you're wonderful. Oh, Vernon. <laughs> May all our children be catchers. And him a pitcher. You see what I mean? Baseball. It don't make sense. <laughs> Wallington speaking. You have just heard the last act of It Happens Every Spring. And our star, Ray Milland, with our guest screen director, Lloyd Bacon, will be with us in just a moment. Next Friday, one of Hollywood's most charming and talented actresses brings a favorite comedy performance to the screen director's playhouse. Our story is A Kiss in the Dark. And recreating her original role will be Jane Wyman oh. with screen director Delmer Day. And now, here again is tonight's star, Ray Milland. Ray, don't be surprised from now on if you get a few phone calls from the Dodgers every spring. Well, I wouldn't be much help, Jimmy. I haven't any of that magic hair tonic. Besides, in spring, my fancies turn to other things besides baseball. 
Oh, lightly turn to thoughts of love, for example? No, not lightly, Jimmy. I'm a very happily married man. Well, a married man enjoys a little romance. With his wife, that is. Soft lights, sweet music and stuff. Sweet music, but definitely. Which more than ever can be enjoyed right at home these days, thanks to the RCA Victor 45. I know what you mean, Jimmy. Like dancing to those 15 big-name bands RCA Victor's recorded on 45. Exactly. But, of course, dance music is but part of all the music RCA Victor has released on 45. More than 2,100 tunes, and more being recorded every day. Well, can't say we bought that many 45 records, but we did buy both popular models of the 45 changer. The automatic attachment model? Which we have plugged into our radio set. And which you can also plug into your Victrola phonograph or television set. Mm -hmm. Have to try that. Our other 45 is the little one with its own loudspeaker, Mrs. Milan's very own. That is, when our young son Daniel hasn't picked it up and carried it off to his room. Well, there you have it, Ray. Even a mere youngster can play it. Jimmy, you can hardly miss getting those seven-inch records onto the big center spindle correctly. And what's there to do after that? Nothing but press one button once and enjoy up to 50 minutes of music. And what music, Jimmy? Such rich tone. And there's the second great feature of the RCA Victor 45. Quality. The third is its low cost. 45 automatic players begin at $12.95. And 45 records as low as 46 cents. Those 15 dance albums you mentioned, Ray, cost $12.45 less when purchased on 45. And that's only 50 cents short of the price of a completely automatic 45 attachment. With record savings like this, it's no wonder all America is swinging to 45. Best swing I've ever seen, Jimmy. None better, Ray. Friends, join the swing to 45 when you buy your next record. Ladies and gentlemen, if ever a person dearly loved a motion picture, the director loved it happens every spring. Upon this film, he lavished the elaborate affection that springs only from the heart of a man who is absolutely dippy about baseball. Now I'd like you to meet him, the frustrated first baseman who's created such wonderful films as You Were Meant For Me, Mother is a Freshman, and Miss Grant Takes Richmond. The director, Lloyd Bacon. Thank you, Ray, but I'm not really such a baseball fanatic. Well, Lloyd, you know how people talk. I wanted to direct It Happens Every Spring because I just like baseball. Nothing wrong with that, is there? No, of course not. Doesn't make me a fanatic, does it? Certainly not. Oh, Ray, do you like baseball? As a matter of fact, Lloyd, I do, yeah. Good. You've got to come over to my place sometime. Oh, why? Baseballs. I've got thousands of baseballs. <laughs> I understand, Lloyd. You're just a guy who puts his heart into the game. And fortunately for us actors, you direct your pictures the same way. So, Lloyd, if you'll have me in another film, I'll do better than visit you and your baseballs. You will? I'll bring my bat with me. Good night, Lloyd. <laughs> Good night, Ray. Good night. And good night to you, Ray Milland and Lloyd Bacon. Remember next Friday, Jane Wyman in A Kiss in the Dark with screen director Delmer Daves, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio... First in recorded music, first in television. It Happens Every Spring was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the Technicolor musical Wabash Avenue, starring Betty Grable and Victor Mature. Ray Milland will soon be seen in the Paramount picture Copper Canyon. Lloyd Bacon recently directed the forthcoming Columbia Pictures production Kill the Empire, starring William Bendix. Included in tonight's cast were Eddie Field, Parley Bear... Ted DeCorsia, Dan Riss, Frank Nelson, Ann Diamond, and Frank Barton. It Happens Every Spring was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons, and original music was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Green Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Carn. Portions of the program were transcribed. You are invited to listen again next Friday when RCA Victor presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Jane Wyman, production A Kiss in the Dark... Director, Delmer Daves. Stay tuned for Jimmy, the great Rupert Durante on NBC.